But um, I'm, if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But most of the answers are going to be, you know, we need to do more research. Um, I've got your information from these nets. If you see something happening, feel free to holler at me and just say, hey, we noticed something, you know, such and such. We can always go back in time and look it up and document it. And, um, you know, maybe it is the, the time of day and the this and the, you know, whatever else is coming up crazy that makes it happen. So I, I don't know. Did you did you email the ham side guy? I can't remember doctor, yes. that young fella. Yes, but they had nothing working on it. He was interested in what we, you know, come do a presentation, you know, that kind of thing. But um, uh, he was interested. They just he didn't know anybody doing it. Yeah, Nathan, uh, whatever his name is. Yeah, I've got a question. Since all our repeaters are tone axioms and their FM. FM has capture effect. Mm -hmm. How is the noise getting through when it needs tone access? Well, it only comes through when when Billy Bob keys his radio. So the Billy Bob keys the radio, his tone turns on, which turns on the receiver. However, it's not enough to get a good signal. It's enough so it can decode the tone. And get through however scratchy he may be. Just, just yeah. breaking the squelch. It's not yeah. expecting the noise. Yeah, and you gotta have trigger, you know, again, that's a trigger deal. <laughs> you gotta have Billy Bob with his with his uh, tone to open the receiver, and Look. then it hears noise. Look, you, you, you can hear the yeah, tone. <laughs> yeah, right right, 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 right. But you can still measure it. If you turn on an SDR right now, you can see the background noise, and it, it's just moving. Doesn't move fast, but it moves. But you'll see. If you had just the tone and no voice modulation, you might be able to see the tone, which is keeping the repeater activated. Well, it's the tone. Yeah, you'll see that tone because it obviously comes the repeater. How how your receiver traps out that tone? You know, you may have a good receiver that pulls out that CTCSS tone, or um, ours does not very well, so you can hear the tone coming through on the output. But uh, good questions. Good question. I'll be around if you want to. Uh, uh, we'll change that. Let me go with one more thing that we've got. I've got some handouts. I'll do it. Uh, all of you fine folks have said <coughs> we want HOA help. Anybody here have HOA problems? Yes. Now is the time. Now is the time to act. Yeah. We'd always said we'll be ready when you are. Uh, now is the time to act. We're sending out something that. Uh, that will that will point to a web page I've got that tells you how to um, contact or create a letter for us. We will deliver that letter to your senators and your Congress critters. Uh, John Stratton is uh, collecting those, and he will be delivering them to uh, the folks either here or in Washington D.C. Just depends on timing uh, when we get those. So there is a way for the club members, the club officials. And that's what he's really trying to do now is, is get the club officials to sign something that says, hey, I'm a club, you know, we're a club official and we support this HOA legislation. The, uh, oh, there you go. And, um, it, you know, it, it's not, you're, you're not stretching anything of any, any imagination. The bill is on that website. You can easily read the bill. It says, uh, it's ok.arl.org slash HOA. And uh, if you read that document, you will see that it allows a certain number of antennas. Wire antennas are one that would allow. Uh, it, it, it's going to restrict HOAs and other uh, restricted land use groups so they cannot put any restrictions on the listed documents. Uh, for instance, a one meter diameter uh, antenna is, you can't do anything with. A wire antenna, you can, can't do anything with. Uh, they have specific restrictions. They will allow. Um, the, the landowners to, or the homeowner association to do things for beautification purposes. For instance, if you have an electrical box that's at the base of the tower, they, they, uh, the HOA can say you have to decorate that, you know, put a bush around it, put a, <laughs> put a rock around it, something like that. If you have a guy wire, guy, bottom guy, you might have to cover that. It allows the guy wire. But the, where the guy uh, hits the ground, they may want that beautified if other people can see it. And it's all in the documentation. It's really plain English. 
Um, I would say if you can do it, what we're wanting to do is either e uh, email me those documents on the papers uh, to n5hzr at arrl.org, or I've got a snail mail address, a PO box, if you want to do that better, that's fine as well. I'll scan them and send them to John. Uh, but we're trying to get as many as we can in a hurry to get a hold of some of the local folks before they head out September 1st. We'll take them forever, but, uh, but we're just trying to get some of the local folks to So if you want to, if you want to help your HOA folks, this is the time. Anything else, Mark, you got? No, that pretty much covers it. Just, it's real important. I mean, granted, there's there's a lot of you that's probably got big pastures out there you can put all kinds of antennas. But just keep in mind that there's a lot of <clears throat> a lot of hams that don't. They got small post stamp lots and HOAs that tell them you can't put up amateur radio antennas. It's important that everybody has that opportunity because it's actually a safeguard for your neighborhood. If you can can monitor uh, seriousness of a natural disaster or a national disaster in those HOAs, it's important. And HOAs don't understand that. So we're trying to get that on an even playing field for everybody. And it's important that we get this done quickly so we can get it to the senators and congressmen that can actually present it, you know, get it passed in, uh, in Washington and get it signed so we can get it done this year. Anybody remember the I'm just a bill thing? I put a link there. To the <laughs> <laughs> Teacher <knows. laughs> well, I'm living in an HOA. I sure would appreciate help if, uh, even though y'all aren't maybe living in an HOA area, it would help me out. I sure would appreciate it if y'all would. I mean, HOA uh, hams are not asking for the moon. I mean, we're only asking to be able to put up, say, a 25-foot tower which you can do in most small lots. The, the way the bill reads is if the tower regulations have to be according to the city and state zoning, whatever the regulations are there. Oklahoma, I have not seen anything less than a 50 foot. Has anybody run into something less than 50 foot? I think that's standard for Oklahoma City. Yeah, it's, it's, I've, I've had a lot of help a lot of guys get theirs. You know, the, the, the building, the zoning people say no. And then well, you might want to rethink this. Anything more? In Edmund, you have to let the tower fall inside your lot. Yeah, those rules would still apply. Which is fine. Which is fine. But we need the opportunity to be able to put up those towers. And that's what we're trying to accomplish with this. Yeah. And just to help Rich, fill one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's, and there's a lot of riches. That, I mean, we, we, we in Oklahoma have a lot of HOAs that people didn't realize there were HOAs when they moved in or... Um, they joined the hobby after they got the HOA, uh, so it's. Uh, I think it's real important. I think anybody in Oklahoma, non-hams, understand what value during tornado season all of us do for those. So I think it's an easy sell for us. Is that it? Thank you all. Appreciate your patience.